Today's video John MacArthur gives his personal views on how there are debates and conflicts about the Bible. During this time we can see the tension between Gino Jennings and Steve Harvey highlighted here as he sent a challenge to Steve Harvey. Let's start with Gino Jennings' arrogant challenge to solve the problem with scripture. Steve Harvey said, I got a problem with that preacher. <laughs> Mr. Harvey, let us just bring it down, you and I, once and for all. Wonderful. Let's strike this thing out with Bible. Now in the book of Mark, chapter 7, we'll start at verse 5. Follow me. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him. So when they interviewed, mm -hmm. uh, they read the letter, Harvey said, I'm trying to be a good man. He said, I'm an expert at this. You see, he got his third wife. You ain't the only thing you were expert in is committing adultery. That's it. Him and, him, him and good Harvey. That's right. The only thing you are expert in is trading and swapping women. That's right. Nothing else. Nothing else. I dare you to tell me you're an expert on the scripture. That's right. If you tell me you're an expert on the scripture, now it's time for me and you to fight it out. Where is the wise? Let's fight it out, Harvey. That's right. Come on now. Come on up with your mink coat and put on your little weasel hat and bring your dyed mustache and let me polish your chrome dome with Bible. <laughs> That's right. After receiving a challenge from Gino Jennings, Steve Harvey was very angry and could not control himself. He responded and expressed his disagreement with the views expressed by Gino Jennings. The pastor told about marriage and stated that anybody that's been married more than once is going straight to hell. This part of the letter affected me deeply. Wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> yes. This part of the letter affected me deeply. <laughs> And I can't go on right now because this man, this pastor said and stated that anyone that has been married more than once is going straight to hell. That's messed up, Pastor. Yeah. Mm. That's messed up because right now, three of us on this show is gone. It's as hard as here. I'm trying to be a better person and a better Christian, now you done told me. I don't care what I do. I'm going to hell. Mm. So there is no forgiveness. Mm. There is no mercy. There is no, there's no grace. There is Thank no her. he died for our sins. Right. It on. ain't none of that. All of y'all has been married more than <laughs> once going straight to hell. God will forgive you That's right. for committing adultery and marrying the second time, third time, fourth time, while the first wife lived. Yeah. That's right. He don't forgive you for you to stay in it. Shall we continue in sin? In Romans chapter 6 and at verse 1. Hear me God, hear me God, hear me God, hear me God. Romans chapter 6 and at verse 1. That's the problem with you folk. You hop on forgiveness. That's right. I admit you can be forgiven moreover. Yeah. But you don't take God's mercy for granted and play around with it. So... Gospel truth is not apprehended by debate. You can uh, have a bunch of unbelievers in a room. You could have an atheist debating with somebody who knew the gospel, and that debate, uh, you know, may prove to fall uh, on the side of the people with the gospel, but only if you're going to believe the Bible. But if you have an unbeliever sitting there, he, he's not able to discern the difference. You don't win the day by debate. You don't even win the day by rational defense, even though you can rationally defend the Bible and even though you can debate successfully. The, the, what draws people to the gospel, what draws people to Christ is a desire to do the will of God. God exists. He is sovereign. He is the judge and the executioner. I'm on the, uh, the wrong side of God. I'm alienated from God. I'm an enemy of God. I need to submit to God. I'm tired of the power that sin expresses in my life, the devastation of sin. I want deliverance. I want freedom. I want a new master. That's what he's talking about. Again, I say truth is not decided by a debate. It's not decided by some kind of an apologetic discussion. But rather, you come to know the truth when God reveals the truth to you. And He reveals it true to, to you only when you seek to do His will. 
This is how faith acts. This is how faith acts. What is saving faith? It is the desire to put your trust in Jesus Christ so as to do the will of God. It requires believing. So if you want to know if Christ is who He claims to be, here's the test. Are you crying out for a new master? Are you desirous of the one and only Savior? Do you have a genuine desire to carry out the revealed will of God in your life? Do you want to go on the narrow road through the narrow gate and walk the narrow way? That's the issue. God told Israel through Moses these words, if you shall seek the Lord your God, you shall find Him. If you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Geno Jennings' straightforward approach has attracted attention, sparking discussions about divorce in the church. Many famous people have found themselves at odds with Geno Jennings due to the stark contrast between his biblical teachings and the lifestyle they have chosen. His steadfastness with his arguments also caused conflicting controversies and intense reactions. John chapter 1 verse 18 says, No one has seen God at any time. You accept that? I accept that. No one has seen God at any time. Exodus chapter 33 verse 20 says, But he said, You cannot see my face, God told Moses. No man can see me and live. You, you can't even look at the sun. What can you see God, the creator of all these heavens and earth? So he says, no man can see me and live. Accept it. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. You'll die, you'll perish. But in Genesis chapter 32, verse 30, God inspires Moses, supposed to be, and tells him about Jacob. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Peniel, Peniel. For I, quoting, for I have seen God face to face. Jacob saw God face to face. But we were told that no man can see God and live. And God is not seen at any time. Now Jacob tells us that he saw God face to face and my life is preserved and I didn't die. Contradiction. Who's inspiring this? Words. I want to know. The pastor will explain. Not only does Gino Jennings debate with celebrities about his personal views, but he also gives his views and debates with Muslims. I think these are unnecessary because the concepts in the Bible are very broad and it is impossible to guarantee that the views we give are correct. Be careful with your words and actions. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.